Hey, what's going on guys? It's Will. Hopefully you're having a great day today. So in this video, did you know that there's been millions of dollars being sold direct to consumer just on one platform alone? And I'm going to be covering that platform today. Hopefully you guys are having a good one. And for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Will and I cover how we run our music businesses, the different parts of the industry, how you can monetize your music online and i share with you guys what's working and not working in our series of music businesses thank you guys so much for tuning in and let's take a look here we're looking at banzoogle so banzoogle facilitated 16.4 million in revenues for musicians in 2023 so this is direct to fan sale so if you have a audience and you decide i'm going to whether you're an independent record label or producer, you might be a singer songwriter and you say, I'm going to sell my music directly to my fans. I'm not going to rely on a third party and I'm not going to wait months and months for getting my royalties. I'm not going to go less than a penny per stream. I'm going to take this music and I'm going to sell it right now to get cash. And the prime segment of my audience that wants to listen to my music can purchase my music right now. So that is something that this platform enables you to do. And before I get into it, I'm actually bullish on this platform for a few reasons. Number one, Banzoogle has 0% commissions. How great is that? So this third party that you're using, Banzoogle, is not actually acting as a financial third party that you have to pay out the money to in percentage to your sales. Yeah, they have a subscription for you know how much you have to pay for your membership. It's from eight bucks to, I think, $16.50 for their pro tier. But that's nothing compared to, you know, if you're making, let's say you get 100 sales and you have 25 bucks a pop for these 100 sales of your music, you know, that's uh, $2,500 for your music. That is, uh, if you're paying percentage, 20%, for example, that would be around $500 you have to pay back to the platform. But by having the fixed rate that they have here, you don't have to pay that back. It's just the $8 or the $16. And that's great. So if you get a million, or let's say you get a million streams on Spotify or 2 million streams on Spotify, then you would make as much as you would make if you had those 100 sales. So 100 sales, just 100 people to buy your music, over 2,000 bucks, and then over a million streams or 2 million streams to get 2,500 bucks. Do you see the difference in leverage that you get? See, this is where the music industry is shifting. And there's a reason that I'm covering this. It's because Banzoogle has been growing at 21% year over year. And while I'm only covering this platform, there's tons of different direct to consumer music platforms that are popping up in this music money market of the music industry. There's many different markets there's producer sample packs, there's uh, merch, there's selling your music direct to consumer, there is the streaming market, there's the sync licensing market, there's the publishing, right? But this direct consumer market, I like to call it a money market, I think that it is growing significantly. We've seen 21% year over year, and let's take a look at the numbers. The infographic shows that of total revenues from Banzoogle, in the past year, uh, we have 8.8 .8 million came from merch sales. So that would be your hats, that would be the caps, your t-shirts and sweatshirts and water bottles or your vinyl records that you put on the platform, 8.8 .8 million. $4.1 million is what artists sold on the platform in ticket sales. $1 million, so that could be, uh, to get into that actually, ticket sales. A lot of people think about ticket sales and they think, oh, I got to book a venue locally or in a city and then I sell my tickets. But what we're seeing too in this music industry shift, especially in the past two years and, and definitely uh, through the C word, uh, you know, in 2020, we're seeing that concerts are becoming more common in the digital space. So while it says $4.1 million from ticket sales, the sales could be for tickets for concerts that are physical 
or concerts that are digital. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're an artist or if you're thinking about where you're gonna grow, you can do you know physical or digital concerts. So we have $1 million just in tips, tip jar donations, they call it, just in tips alone. If you're an artist, you share with your fan on this platform just to give you a tip to help you buy you a coffee, right? $1 million they saw in the last year, just from artists selling tips. $800,000 from fan subscriptions. So this is, you get exclusive access to merch, or exclusive access to a group chat or a concert. Uh, maybe you get um, exclusive access to work with me in a group chat or talk with me as an artist and fan subscriptions were around $800,000 um, in the past year and $1.7 million in digital music sales. So that would be your copies of your music, your uh, sample packs, your uh, licensing that you purchase, the digital music sales, $1.7 million. So I think this tells us a lot too, because we're seeing that the digital music sales, you know, it's kind of in the, uh, let's call it the B or the C tier compared to the merch sales being around 8.8 .8 million. And then you look at ticket sales, that's kind of up there. That's kind of in the mid range. That's actually a B tier um, revenue source for artists. So if you're a songwriter, an artist, a, a publisher, a producer, or a label, and you're saying, where can I monetize my music the most? Where can I get the most out of it? First, choose a money market like you see here. Choose a platform here. Uh, could be Banzoogle or another platform. And then offer your music. Create offers to sell your music. For those of you that are in our future artist group, that's the first link in the description. We talk about this all the time. How do you get into a market for your music that pays you more than that less than a penny per stream? How can you get into a market where the cash is much faster, you are going to have speed, like the speed to payouts is almost immediate and your uh, leverage is higher, so there's not big third parties in between where they determine the value of your music. You have no say, you have no direct contact with your, your um, fans, but that you determine the price of your music. You can talk to your fans directly. And again, that payout, the, the speed to cash is so much faster with the direct consumer music. So that's something we've been talking about a lot in the group. If you guys want to join our future artist group, it's free to join. It's that first link in the description. And I would encourage you guys to start learning about what it takes to get into this music money market. So back in December, we saw that uh, they generated, uh, it says its members generated a cumulative total of $117 million in sales through the platform. So uh, this is a company that launched back in 2003, but they, uh, if you see, you know, 16 million in the past year, that's a big portion of their total revenue. You see, they just surpassed $100 million in direct consumer music sales in January of 2023. So it's been about, you know, year and a half. And this, this revenue went directly to the fans connected with Banzoogle. Like I said, there weren't, there aren't 20% uh, commissions. There aren't commission fees for the artists. Um, and I think that's really incredible. And it's something that you guys should look at because number one, if you're choosing your distributor, it, this is another reason you might want to uh, consider DistroKid because Banzoogle was acquired by the independent music distributor DistroKid last September, a move that enabled artists within the DistroKid ecosystem to use Banzoogle's digital, physical, and on-demand merch and music sales services. So what does this mean? You guys wanna make money selling merch. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes if you have to go and set up your Shopify store or you have to go on a platform you don't really understand. DistroKid, they buy Banzoogle and in that acquisition, now they're making it easy for you to sell your music, easy for you to create merch stores, easy for you to uh, create the physical and digital copies of your music that you get music sales of each and every release. You can make it so that you're making money through 
your release in this way. So Banzoogle has built incredible tools that makes it super easy and impactful in e-commerce. And guys, if we're going direct to consumer, you guys have seen, we've had a ton of platforms recently come out, right? Direct to consumer is one of the changing, shifting uh, dynamics in this music industry that's going from, oh, CDs or oh, vinyl to, oh, this is actually something that's sustainable for artists to build the consistent income that they're looking for. And so for those of you that are thinking, well, I, I, I'm kind of on the fence. I kind of want to keep trying to grow my audience first because I'm not going to make any money selling because I don't have a big audience. This There's some data that's showing that you don't need a massive audience at all. In fact, you know, we interviewed Spotty Wi-Fi on this channel about two years ago today. He sold over $200,000 worth of music with only 1,500 subscri- or, uh, monthly plays on Spotify. So imagine that. You have 1,000 monthly listeners, but you're selling thousands of dollars worth of music. Why is that? Well, there's a prime segment of your audience. It might be 10 out of 100 listeners. It might be 50 out of 1,000 or 100 out of 1,000 listeners. But there's this prime segment of your listening audience that when you offer them music, they are music buyers. They are, some of them will be deep pocketed. Some of them are going to really want to support your music career. Some of them are going to just pay what they want, pay a couple bucks, like from the tip jar that we were looking at earlier that had over a million dollars in revenue in the past year. And so having the ability to enter this market and say, yeah, I'm gonna do streaming, Yeah, I'm going to go for views. Yeah, I'm going to grow my audience. But on top of that, I'm going to give that prime segment of my audience this music offer that is going to basically generate you an extra form of income outside of the streams. And when you're going for streams, you might take months and months and months and months to see the royalty check, or even have to struggle to try and get the royalty check because you got to go to ASCAP or BMI and you got to go to Sound Exchange and you got to wait for your distributor. And sometimes there's this payout point. The other day, we were trying to get our payouts from uh, CD Baby. And it was like, it was crazy because it was a couple hundred bucks or close to $200, I believe. And we're looking at it and we're like, you know, in order to get this out, we have to pay them $5. But what if the amount is is uh, ten dollars? Do I do we still have to pay the the five dollars? And they're like, yeah, you still have to pay. It. In, in fact, uh, then that means that you're only withdrawing five, and we're not going to give you any of that money because the minimum withdrawal is ten dollars. Do you see the difference here? It's like, okay, not only do you have to wait months and months and months to get your streaming money or recording revenue, but then there's minimum payouts, they don't always pay it out, and then there's fees associated with those payouts. But then it's like, when you go direct consumer, and it's music that's not determined a value by this third party with high competition and hundreds of thousands of songs going out every single day on these streaming platforms, but you choose over here and you say, this is less competition, I'm going direct communication with my fans, it's direct music line of sales, and you sell to them, your your prime segment of your audience, you sell to them your music offers, your merch, your tickets online and digital. And then the paydays actually come way faster and the leverage is that much greater. And so e-commerce is something you guys have heard of many times, I'm sure, but I feel like there's this conditioning belief, this conditioning belief that we've been taught by the music industry that has been ingrained in so many artists that streaming is is the best. If you have a million streams, then that's where you're going to make the considerable amount of money. Like that's where you're going to have your fame is getting lots of streams. But the artists that are getting a lot of streams, if they're getting a million streams a month, where they're going to make their money is not the million streams. That's a thousand bucks a month. That's maybe livable. Where they're going to make their 
their living and their fortune of their music is over here on the direct consumer side of the music. And so many times artists, they say, I'm not going to go over to this direct consumer side of music until I figure out how I can grow my audience bigger, until I have a million streams, or until I at least have an audience that maybe would see my brand as valuable and purchase. But the reality is you don't have to start with that. You see, when you're going into a music money market like direct consumer sales, if you have 10 fans and two of them, two of them purchase your $25 music offer at 50 bucks, that $50, do you know how much it would make or how much it would take to get $50 on streams right now in 2024? If you're going on Spotify to get $50 in streams, you're going to have to get somewhere between 30,000 plays and 50,000 plays. Does that seem relatively in proportion to the amount of work that you put into your music? Do you think you have a, um, you can get to that 30,000 streams or 50,000 streams on a shoestring budget or maybe not shoestring budget. Maybe you have money to spend, but do you think it's worth it to go spend your time producing? You spend some money on engineering. Maybe you put some money on ads. You put some money on the outfits or, or put some money on the album artwork or creating, getting some new studio equipment. Let's just conservatively say you spend a hundred dollars or $200 on that. To go get 30,000 to 50,000 streams and then you get paid $50 back, you are $200 in to the music. And the reason why there's so much backlash in the industry right now, and I said this in yesterday's video, is that there is a misalignment with the amount of money that you're making in music when you go in this streaming market. There's a misalignment to the amount of money that you make, to the amount of work that you're putting in. So let me say that again. When you're in the streaming market, there's a misalignment to the amount of money that you make, to the amount of work that you're putting in. When you're over here in a music money market, like direct to consumer sales, and you go with that prime segment of your audience, the amount of work that you put in is going to show that it's it's the amount of money you make is going to be aligned with the amount of work that you put in. And you will be paid in direct proportion to the amount of work you put in. And you'll determine the value of your music and you'll be paid for it if the market deems it to be that value. So of course, you know, I've made a video in the past where I say, you see this drawing that I made and it was kind of an ugly drawing. And I said, I can say that this drawing is worth $200,000 and you can't disagree with me. <laughs> and of course you might say, well, Will, I'm not going to pay 200, like no one's going to pay. Okay. That's fine. That's the price that I get it. If someone pays, someone pays, someone doesn't pay, they don't pay. But that's the price that, that I personally deem my art to be worth. Now you can get it appraised. Then you could actually put it out in the market and see what it will really sell for. And that will give you a price that you would want to set, right? That should be your price calculator. Um, we have a price calculator actually that we go through, but this is like the exact market demand. And you're like, okay, the market, if you do a pay what you want for this piece of art and everybody is like, I'm going to pay, you know, 50 bucks for that painting. And you're like, okay, so my paintings that are around this style are worth 50 bucks and the market's. I, I could try and raise my market. Maybe I'll put it higher. Maybe I'll put it lower to get more sales. But you, you get a market demand there, you know. But what I'm saying is give your chance, give yourself a chance to price your art. Give yourself a chance to see where the market is with the price of your art. And also give that prime segment of your audience the chance to purchase the art from you, the artist. And that's that's what I'd say. The the last thing that I want to leave you guys with before we get going is um, this little story. So a couple years ago, when I was making a song for Invisalign, you, you guys might know the story, but I made a song for Invisalign, sold it to them for five figures. When I did, 
there was this artist that I really admired. He's really similar to a lot of the artists that follow this YouTube channel. A lot of the subscribers here that I love to, to go check out their music. I'm always looking at my new subscribers, their music, how their channels are going. A lot of you guys are making amazing music. And there was this one artist that made the beat for that song that I did. And he was working on making a beat every single day. Every time I looked at his uh, YouTube or I looked at his SoundCloud, he had a new uh, song there. And guess what? He was getting around 50 views every single uh, play, every single release. And I thought, this guy makes amazing beats. Obviously, it's over a $10,000 beat because I just purchased it from him for way less for I think it was $100. And, and sold it for more. And he just kept going. And he just kept going. His name's That Kid Gorn. You can go check him out on YouTube channel. But now he's got well over a quarter of a million followers on YouTube. He's got hundreds of thousands on, on SoundCloud. And he makes money passively by selling his music. He just creates music. He puts it out. And he has a store where people go purchase his music. And the licenses, they range from $20 to $300. And every day... You know, he can just create music and when he looks at his sales, he knows, oh, I've been creating content. I've been uh, getting this audience. Thousands of people listen to it and it doesn't pay much on my streams. He's like, but there's some of my audience. There's a small percentage of my audience that pay premiums on my music and they go to my Beat Stars or they go to my Shopify store and they purchase my music. And because of that, it's making 10, 20 sales a day at an average price of 30 bucks. So he's making between $300 and $600 every single day from his music. And it's fueling a life of freedom. He can travel where he wants. He can have the lifestyle that he wants. He's living a life that is on his terms where he's determining the value. His income isn't based on his time. It's based on his creativity. Something that's not finite, but that is unlimited. Whereas your time is limited. But when you base your income on your creativity and you do it in this way and you get in the right markets and you get on the right platforms and you create the right music offers, that's what's possible. That is the consistent money making that he's experiencing from music and it's allowing him to create the life that he wants, to live his life how he wants, location freedom and financial freedom and really time freedom. He just creates and he likes to create. He's doing what he wants to do. And it's all because he's in the right market. So I would encourage you guys once again to uh, check out that link down below in the description. It gives you a great you know, breakdown of direct consumer music sales. But also check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe if you got any value out of this video. I would encourage you guys leave a thumbs up. And if you made it this far, I know you're a real one. Go ahead and comment down below with, uh, let's go with the money bag emoji. Because today we're talking about some great markets in the music industry. And I think these this is the profit pocket that you want to look at. Direct to consumer music sales. Look at some of these platforms, this platform we covered today. And think about how you can get started. Pick that number. Say, how much music am I going to release? Get in the right market. Get on the right platform. And create the right music offers. And I believe you can have success like any other artist, and there will be less competition for you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.